can have your will be placed. Simple as that. Simple as that. So go to Joshua 3 and 5. Because when we have been doing the things that are against God's priority list, we have to do what? Sanctify yourself. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. We have to get in a position where we sanctify ourselves. That means set ourselves apart from all of the stuff that we've been doing. Set ourselves apart from the mindset that we have. Sometimes our mindset will keep us in a place where we can't receive the fullness of God. Amen. The mindset that we have that we're not going to do it God's way, we're going to try to do it our way, that's pride. The Amen. mindset says, well, that ain't worked for me before. I ain't going to try that again. Well, that's like Jesus told the boy, go back out there in the water, throw out your net. He said, but I went out there fishing all the time. He said, but go on out there again. I'm here now. I got that. So the boy went on back out there with the boat and with the nets and everything and threw it out there. They had all these fish so much so they had to share with folks. God said, the thing that I told you to do before that you didn't do the right way, I'm going to send you back to do it again. Mm. And this time, when I tell you you're going to do it, do it my way. Right. That's going to help somebody right there. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Don't try to do it your way. If I tell you to take this can and go out there and stand on 39th and Prospect with this can, with this face and this side, don't go with the can face and this side. All right. Do it exactly like the Lord said. So that he can give you the fullness thereof. Because there's a strategy and a pattern for everything. Amen. Satan just wants you to be a little disobedient. Don't you realize that disobedience will kill a nation? Yes, it will. Disobedience is killing this nation. Amen. So disobedience will kill your nation that's in your belly. Amen. Mm. My God. So he says sanctify yourselves. Because it's time to take back the the ground that you lost. It's time to take back the riches that you lost. It's time to take back the mindset that you lost. And once you have done that, then you can begin to move in a realm, in a sphere, that God will allow things to come your way. Amen. God needs to know that he can trust you. That's yes. right. And it's not that he knows or doesn't know, it's that you need to know that you can be trusted. If you know you're a thief, why would people trust you with money? I'm going to let you in the bank vault and I know you're a thief and you know you're a thief. And he said, man, they know I'm a thief. Why they let me in the bank? <laughs> Even you know you're a thief. Amen. So if you know you're a thief, why would God entrust you with riches? Amen. Amen. Once you understand that the riches belong to you, then you understand that you have reinforcements that are waiting for you. Waiting to help you. Because there's no temptation that comes upon you that God won't help you out. All right. Amen. Amen. There's nothing that comes in your life that God will help you walk out of. If you got a problem riding your loins, God will help you ride with your loins. That's right. Y'all do understand that, right? Amen. We got kids. <laughs> He'll help you ride with your loins. Amen. So when you say you want to ride with your loins, don't be calling <coughs> Pookie in the midnight hour. All right, now. Because that ain't bridling your loins. That's inviting the temptation. That's inviting the lust. That's you know you got a problem, don't drive down to the boat and you're going to eat crab legs. No, <laughs> as soon as you Cobble down all them crab legs. You going right on that machine. <laughs> grab your slot machine and start pooping. All right. You know darn well if you go into pennies and they got that 50% off sale and you got to pay your rent. You know the minute you go into pennies, you're going to pay your rent. Spend your rent money. You're going to come up out of there broke as a joke. So don't invite the temptation in. Amen. You know it. You already know. You know you got a drinking problem. Why are you at the liquor store? Got it. Why? Why? You know you like to smoke weed. Why are you at the dope house? Don't go! Because you're inviting in the temptation. You're surrendering yourself to the thing that's got you bound anyway. Next, the reinforcements I'm talking about are yours. The Bible says in Joshua 5.14, go to 5.14. So he said, no. But as commander of the army, we go back to 13, so you know why he's saying no. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. Ooh. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? Yeah. These are enemies. Mm -hmm. And he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have come. And Joshua fell down on his 
face on the earth and did what? Worship. 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 Worshiped. And said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? There will be times when the Lord will send you a word. Mm -hmm. And the word may not look like you think it's supposed to look like. And the person that's getting ready to bring you the word may not look like what you think they look like. Amen. But say, what does my servant say to the Lord? Amen. What does my what does my Lord say to his servant? Amen. And the Lord may just want you to worship at that point. Just Amen. worship. Don't try to figure it out or try to figure God out or dissect the word. Just worship. Right. And this is what he said. Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, take off your sandal. For the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Did so. Just obey God. Amen. You may not understand what is about to happen, but just obey God. When God tells you, take off your sandals, that mean, may just mean get on your face. Take off your sandals. That may mean turn off your TV. Take off, turn, uh, turn off your, take off your sandals. That means maybe be fast for the day. Take off those sandals. That means maybe don't go out to the shopping center today. Just stay home and get in your word. Take off your sandals. Just get in your word and get on your face. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Because God is ready to do something, but he can't give you the strategy for it because you're too busy being busy. All right, now. And that little bit of disobedience is still disobedience. Take off your sandals because the place where you stand is holy. God is ready to speak. When yes. God is ready to speak, man can't stand with his shoes on. Joshua got on his face. Yeah. Yes. You need to get on. Sometimes we just need to get on our face. Mm -hmm. Stop cooking in the kitchen, turn the pot off, and just go get on your face. Yeah. And just hum, sing, and say, Lord, your servant is listening. Mm -hmm. The answer to your solution may not look like what you want it to look like, mm -hmm. but it's still there. Mm -hmm. He is still ready to give it to you. All you got to do is be ready to receive it. Amen. But if you're not in position, you know, people will go to work before they come to the house of the Lord. Yes, people will go to work before they get on their face before the Lord. Yes, I'm so tired. Mm. But you went to work all day and gave them sure folks eight hours. Amen. But you won't go to your secret place, your prayer closet, and give God 20 minutes to get a strategy. That job may be the very thing that's keeping you from God. That job may be the very thing that you're about to lose, but you won't go listen to God so he can tell you how to keep the strategy to get a job, start a business, and go get another job. Amen. The people on your job may be about to lie on you and set you up for something, and God is ready to, to uh, expose that thing so you know how to go in the next day. God may be ready to tell you how to do spiritual warfare on your job so that you'll keep that job until he's ready to move you somewhere else. Because you may be the example on the job that God needs there because it's ungodly. But you won't pray, you won't fast, you won't seek the face of God, and you just miss out on everything that he has. God may be ready to take that supervisor that's coming against you because they're jealous of you Get them out of the place, but they got to get mm. you in position so you can take the job. Amen. 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 Some people on your job just dislike you because they're threatened by you. Amen. 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 They're threatened by you. That's true. Don't wonder why she don't like because she's threatened by you. That's true. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right now. Jealousy. Yeah. Will cause them to get you fired for no reason. Amen. Because they already know that you got more than they got, and Amen. they're afraid that somebody's gonna figure out that they don't have it and you got it and give it to you. Amen. So if you don't get the strategy Amen. so that God can move them out of position and put you in position, you're gonna miss out. Right. So the reinforcements that you need, the commander of the army of the Lord. He's ready to give you the strategy, he's ready to show you how to say whatever is in your path. And he said in there with sword drawn. So when the when the army of the Lord comes, he come with a sword drawn. Yes, he does. He come ready to do battle. All right. So if he's ready to do battle, how come you out of position? Amen. If he's ready to do battle, how come you ain't praying and fasting to seek in the face of God? Mm. Because you got to first seek the face of God so you recognize the command of the army of the Lord. Because he may not look like you want him to look. He may be a little ragtag homeless man. <laughs> But he's still, and he may not really be homeless. He may Amen. be an angel that you want to entertain because he don't look Amen. the right way. Amen. Amen. That's true. Amen. But because he don't look or smell like you think he ought to smell, Amen. you pass him by. And there go your destiny right in that little man's belly. Amen. That dollar that you denied him, you missed that destiny because you denied him that dollar. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even about the dollar, it was about your obedience. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to give him my dollar because he's going to go smoke crack. He's an angel, he ain't smoking no crack. Amen. 
So the reinforcements that you need are already there. The Bible says in Matthew 28 and 20, what does it say? I am all, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So no matter where you go and what you do and how you do it, he is always there with you. You just got to recognize where he is. Because he may not be coming in again, looking like you want him to All right now. Right you waiting for a tall, long, tall journey to come in. And here comes the little homeless man again. <laughs> you waiting for her to come in in high heels with a suit on. And here comes the little, little lady from around the corner, the little 85-year-old lady, looking like mother, ready to give you the work. Amen. But you waiting on them to come in in a three-piece suit and say, I shop off. <laughs> and they really saying, I Honda. Amen. Amen. But it don't look like what you think it is. The next, the realm, the realm that is yours. The key passage, you go to Joshua 6. Now listen to this. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days, and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city shall fall down flat, Boop. and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Specific instructions. Mm -hmm. Specific instructions, because the realm is yours. That means the atmosphere is yours. That means the spiritual realm is yours. That means the physical realm is yours. That means that everything around that thing belongs to you. Amen. But you got to understand what it's going to take to get to it. Because if you can't get to it, then it's just going to sit there. Or God will give it to somebody else. But that realm is yours. And God gave the children of Israel specific orders on how to possess the land. Specific orders. He told them, go around that thing every day for six days. That's right. Don't say a word. Sometimes you just got to shut up. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to shut your mouth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. March around that desk of that supervisor <laughs> six days and don't say a word. Just put some oil on your hand and just march around it. Just walk around it a couple of times. Go, hmm. Father, in your name. Thank you, Jesus. Don't even say that. Just march around and say, you're going on. You ain't got to be able to woman just go, shut down. Hold on, shut down. Nobody all want right. all that. All right. Amen. They don't need all of that. Just go on the job a half hour early and march around the woman's desk every day for six Amen. days. And the seventh day you get there, get to the woman's desk in a chair and go around that thing seven times and blow that trumpet in your voice and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority right now. Yeah. That's all you got to do. But sometimes we just want to be deep. Yeah. We ain't got to be yeah. deep. Yes, that brother's ain't deep as a ditch anyway. All right now. <laughs> But you got specific instructions on how to access the realm that God is trying to get you in. He's trying to get us out of the physical realm. Yes. We are so busy being bothered by our flesh because we can't fight that. We're so busy being bothered by the world stuff because we can't fight that either. And then we're bothered by Satan. Amen. So if you got the world against you, you got your flesh against you, and you got Satan against you, you need the commanders of the army of the Lord yes. to help you to fight. Amen. Amen. Because that's the only thing that can help you fight in this realm. Yes, Lord. This earthly realm, the realm of, that you live in, the army of the Lord has to help you. The Holy Ghost of God has to help you yeah. to be able to withstand and stand in this evil age. Yes, Lord. That's what we need. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So he said, and it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down flat. You waiting on some stuff to fall down. Mm. But you waiting on it to explode. It's not going to explode. You waiting on it to crumble and fall. That stronghold, that thing that's, that's built up the tower, that stronghold needs to do this. Because if it doesn't fall down flat, you're going to stumble over the rubble. And you might mess around and fall back into it. Mm, yep, but yep. if it falls down flat, see that in the spirit now, then you just step right on over. All 
You just keep on stepping. Because it's flat. There ain't no jagged edges, no crooked, so you tear your pantyhose, mess up your heels and your shoes. It fell down flat. So you just march on right in. But I don't want the stuff in my life to crumble. I want it to fall down flat so I can march right on in. That's the way your problem is because a stronghold is still a wall. And it still needs to fall flat so you can go on in smoothly. You can go on in safely. You can go on in with the spirit of the Lord as your rear guard. And you don't stumble and fall back into it and say, ooh, I kissed him and my clothes fell off. <laughs> all right then. Amen. I was at the boat and I lost all my money because I just drove by. No, you pulled in. All right then. You know, I was sitting there and I was talking and something came over me and I just cussed my supervisor out. Thank you. Something came over you. That's called a demon. Thank you. It's a cussing demon. Amen. Because you didn't march around the thing six times and on the seventh time, shout. You marched around a woman, that's falling over, screaming and laying, laying your hands on the woman, come in, that's just greasy. Mm. She thinks the cleaning people didn't work. All you had to do was just gently. Right. He didn't tell you to smile right. the thing. Amen. Don't even let her know you've been there. Amen. That must be that old Michelle. Mm -hmm. She always over there with that. Oh. <laughs> that Michelle grease on my Michelle, why are you grease on my desk? I I Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Uh. No. Come on, clean this mess off. I, I ain't going in on that old prayer. If you will obey God and do it the way God, and I use Michelle as an example. Amen. Thank you. Amen. She worked for the folks. Amen. The stuff don't work right. And $100 million on the website don't work. Amen. Still don't work. Amen. <laughs> ain't working yet. Tomorrow. Come on, sign up. It ain't working. Amen. Today, if we obey God's commandments, the walls of your strongholds will fall. All right now. But you got to obey. And finally, the authority that is yours. The Bible says, I have given you authority to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. First of all, you got to have your demons out before you can cast out demons. All right. You can't be running around with a, de a, a, a demon in you and tell me I'm going to cast them out. I'm going to cast out, cast out. You just be collecting a bunch of more demons. Right. Right. All of them come a hell, hell, the games all here. They run up in you. Right. Like you at Union Station. Right. But the authority is yours. Joshua, go to Joshua 10. I hope this helps somebody. Amen. Amen. And we're going to start at verse 7. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal. He and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have delivered them into your hand. Not a man of them shall stand before you. I'm going to stop right there for right there. Do not fear your problems, your situations, your circumstances. Because if you follow God's commandments, not one of those problems are going to be left standing. Amen. Amen. All of them are going to fall down flat. He's going to kill off everything. But you have to be in a position to obey God, to hear God, to live in a place where God can do the things he promised to do. Amen. Because he said, my word shall not return unto me void, but shall accomplish that which I set it out to do. You're the only delay in the accomplishment of the work. You're the delay. you in the way. Don't blame it on Pookie. Pookie just doing what Pookie do. You the delay from the word. You the delay from the obedience. You the delay from the fullness of God. We are the delay. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, 27, give no place to the devil. Give no room to the devil. Amen. Give no opportunity to the devil to come against you. Amen. Thank you. We're coming out of 2013, wasn't it? 2014. There ought to be a list yes. somewhere <laughs> in a little tablet that said, this is the stuff I got unfinished. All right. Yeah. This is the stuff I'm going to finish before I walk into 2014. Yeah. Amen. This is the stuff that's been hanging around, dragging around, nagging around all year long, waiting for me to address it and deal with it. I got one of those lists. I can tell you. <laughs> I got a list. I got pages of a list. I got a list for every category. You know, ain't no people do that kind of thing. We got a, our list got a list. So my list got a list. And 
And my list said to the, my other list, and you need to finish all of this Amen. so that you don't take me into 2014 because this is going to hinder your future. Amen. This is going to hinder your destiny. Yeah. So I'm going through my list, and every time I accomplish something, I check it off. Every time I accomplish something else, I check it off. I said, now, Lord, you know I got a whole big old list because I've been kind of stagnant and lazy. And just trifling. Just tell the truth. Amen. And so, and then discourage. Put that in there, too. But now I'm facing this list at the end of December 13th. Mm -hmm. So I said, Lord, here's what I need you to do. Mm -hmm. Let me finish as much as I can finish in excellence. Mm -hmm. You can't get in a hurry right. to fix a mess because you have a bigger mess. Right. I said, but Lord, I got this list and I know what I got to do. So here's what I need you to do for me. I need you to allow me the first 90 days until the first of the year. Don't give me nothing else new to do. Just let me finish everything on this list. While I'm fasting and praying and seeking the face of God on how to finish the list. But you give me the first 90 days of the year, plus what I got right now, and I promise you I have this list finished. Tell it, amen. And when you make God a promise, don't be analyzed and surprised because he'll slap you dead. Amen. So I asked God to show me, the, give me the list, and I wrote all the stuff down that I needed to, and I'm working through the list. I'm going through it. And I'm diligent on finishing my list. And then the enemy slapped me with some sickness. I said, oh, the devil is alive. Right. The enemy will try to slap you with something to keep you off the course that God set before you so that you don't finish the course. You don't finish the race. I said, well, the devil is alive. I got the oil. You talk about being greasy. I've been anointing everything. I'm, at six, I'm back at 6 a.m. prayer. I'm anointing my back because I got attacked in my back. Amen. I got attacked in my back, which messed with my legs, which messed with because you know when your back hurt, everything hurt. Amen. Baby, I'm crazy. And I got up this morning, got in the shower, and I went to go get dressed. I said, oh, the devil is alive. I went back to the bathroom, got my blessed off, and anointed everything. Amen. Because you got to have your war clothes on when you leave the house. Amen. You got to be armored up when you leave the house. Amen. You don't leave your house without anointing yourself. Don't let your kids go out of the house without anointing them. Don't leave your house without anointing some part of you. All of you need to be armored up. Because the enemy is waiting to kill, steal, and destroy. And the only morning I left the house without anointing myself, I caught hell that day. I mean, I literally, I didn't anoint myself one day. And God allowed me, because I got to the stairs, I said, oh, I didn't anoint myself. That wasn't me, that was the Holy Ghost. And I said, oh, well, I'll anoint myself in the car. Mm. I got out of the house. No. Got into the car. And the cell phone, the hell phone rang. <laughs> the hell phone rang. The hell phone rang. I answered the hell phone. And I did not anoint myself. I called it all day long. But God allowed it to show me something. This ain't no joke. This is no plaything. You need to anoint yourself every time you leave this house, door, Because the enemy is waiting on you out there. Everybody in here needs to anoint themselves before they leave their house because the enemy is out there waiting on them. To kill something, steal something, destroy something. But you have the authority over the something. You have the authority to speak to that thing. You have the authority to move by the power of the living God because Jesus said, I gave you authority. All right, yeah. 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 He gave us a dunamis authority. Yes. He gave us a co-op authority. Yeah. He gave us exousia authority all to right. do all the things that he has called us to do. Amen. And you can't be too busy and too lazy to anoint yourself. Yeah. It's just a little oil slap on Get out of the shower before you put it in because the Lord gave specific instructions before you do anything, anoint yourself. So that you are armored up from head to toe and everything in between. But this authority that he's trying to give us, we keep rejecting it. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. Because it ain't that, you know, it ain't that deep. Uh, it don't mm. take all of that. Mm. It ain't that deep. It don't take all of that. Yes, it does. Yeah. That's why so many people are living defeated lives. Mm. And we almost do. So let me get back over to Josh. Joshua therefore, and I'm at verse 9, Joshua therefore came upon them suddenly, having marched all night from Gilgal. I got to stop right there. Sometimes God's move on your life is going to require a serious sacrifice. You may have to stay up all night. Pray. You may have to stay up all night. Fasting. You may have to stay up all night. Marching around oh your spiritual house Amen. in order for 
of God to move. Amen. Amen. And you look at, you may have some bags under your eyes and be a little sleepy, but God said, yes. march all night to get to where I'm taking you. Yes. God yes. said, get on your face and pray all night yes. for where I'm taking you. God yes. said, yes. go in the secret place and be there until I'm ready Come to on. speak to you about your situation. Yes. He said, yes. so the Lord routed them before Gilgal. Killed them with a great slaughter mm. in Gibeon, chased them along the road that goes to Beth Horon, and struck them down as far as Azekah and Makeda. And it happened as they fled before Israel and were on the descent of Beth Horon, the Lord cast down large hailstones from heaven on them as far as Azekah, and they died. God will send a hailstorm to kill your stuff, yeah. kill your enemy's stuff. God will send a hailstorm to cut down everything that's coming against you because you're going in the army of the Lord. You're going in the power of the Lord. You're going in the authority of the Lord. He will send a hailstorm of his fire, his rain, to come against the very thing that's challenging the people of God. And that thing will die completely. You ain't got to touch it. Joshua didn't touch nothing. God sent a hailstorm. And killed up everything that was trying to distract him from getting to where God sent him to do. God will do that for you. He'll do it for you. And it happened as they fled before Israel. There were more who, who died from the hailstorm than the children of Israel killed with the sword. There'll be more stuff dying in your life just by God speaking over it than you could ever do by cussing them out, putting them out, talking them out, crying them out, shouting them out. God will do more stuff. He will kill more stuff in your life than you can ever do. Amen. All you got to do is trust and believe. God killing stuff in my life every day. This list I told you about. Every time I accomplish something, I feel God's power coming back. Amen. I woke up this morning and I was just laying in bed. And when God is, is around me, I see the manifested presence in these lights that swim in my eyes. All right, I see him just swimming around. I just see it like a beautiful prism of light. Amen. And he said, I want you to, he said, I'm sending you on a 40-day fast. But the condition of the 40-day fast was this, you got to write it. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to go to the books and see how so-and-so said to do the 40-day fast. I want to give you the instruction for the 40-day fast. I said, really? I've never done that before. I wrote a whole bunch of books. But I never wrote one line by night. Every day, of, uh, every day a different fast. Mm -hmm. But this is the instruction that I'm to give, that he's given me, so I can give it to the people. So going into the new year, when it's time to have this 40-day fast, because it's going to be a quick work. Amen. And I got to the prayer room, and he just started writing. I was writing, he, he was talking, and I was writing. He was talking, and I was writing. And I, was, I had wrote the first three chapters on what to pray, why to pray, why to repent. All of that stuff, he already wrote it out. So now you're going to give me the guidelines, day one. This is what you pray for. You're going to pray for the first three days for repentance. Amen. You're going to repent for something, 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 something. First three days, he already said, the first three days you write out are going to be about repentance. Amen. Because it's going to take them that long just to get their stuff off the, Amen. Off the list. Amen. Just to get yourself out the way for the first three days of the 40 days. Amen. He said you got to starve yourself. He said nothing about it. He said it's a soul fast. Amen. So, ooh. So he wants me to write it out. That's okay, God. But it's the pattern that I'm talking about. Because it's going to be the strongholds that are broken while we're in the midst of it. And part of this time, I will be fasting food. I will be fasting television. I will be fasting all of these other things. But it's the commandment of the Lord. Amen. It's the commandment. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord... Then, then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in this, in the sight of Israel, Son, listen to this, stand still over Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Aijalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stopped till the people had revenge upon their enemies. What had happened was this. Joshua and the people were fighting. And they were fighting the enemy, and it was starting to get dark. So Joshua spoke to the sun and to the moon and told, them to, told the sun to be still. Which means that Joshua stopped time. Joshua stopped time. 
Because when the sun goes down, what rises? The moon. So he couldn't just speak to the sun. He had to also speak. Now look at it because I want y'all to get this. Get this. I want y'all to see this one right here. He couldn't just speak to the sun because if he had just spoke to the sun, the moon would still come up because the moon knew how it still, the moon knew it had to rise at a certain time. So he said, sun stand still over Gibeon and moon in the valley of Aijan. And the sun stood still and the moon stopped. Amen. There are some things in your life come on, yeah. that you can speak to come on. Come on. and they will stop. Amen. And while this thing is stopping, because see, this has to stand still, mm -hmm. but then this thing over here got to stop mm -hmm. because they got to stay in balance. Yeah. The sun knows to rise at a certain time every day. The moon knows to rise at a certain time every night. Right. But see, when you got problems over here that are coming against you, you got to speak to them and tell them to, to stand still. Mm -hmm. When you got this thing over here about to come against you, you got to tell that thing to stop yeah. so that you can deal with this over here. Because in the middle of the sun stopping and the moon stopping, there was the battle in the middle. My God. So you got to tell the battle in the middle, come on, I got to kill everything now. Yeah. 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 I got to kill everything in the middle between the sun rising and the moon setting. I got to kill everything in the middle. Yeah. So whatever your in the middle is, that's the stuff you got to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're about to lose your house, come then on. you go over here and speak, I need these financial people to stop right here in the name of Jesus well, and stop, the, stop this foreclosure proceeding while you go over here and speak. I need my finances to rise up so that I can meet yes. the middle and save my house. Yes, Lord. That's good. That's good. You got to meet that thing right in the middle. Yes. That list that you got to take care of, whatever your list is, you got to meet all that stuff in the middle. If you can't finish it by December 31st, Lord, give me 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Don't go past 90 days. Because that's a whole nother season now. But Lord, give me a certain amount of time to finish all of this on my list. Let me deal with everything that I, every problem I got. Let me deal with every janky, lazy thing that I didn't deal with at 13. But everything that you can finish in excellence, finish it now. Speak to the sun. Speak to the moon. Speak to your problem. Speak to your problem. Take the authority. See, Joshua had an authority yeah, yeah, yeah. that he could stop the sun mm. and the moon. You've got an authority that you can speak to your mountain. Yeah, yeah. You've got an authority Jesus. that everything in your life will come in alignment. See, the sun and the moon came in alignment with the very word that God had already spoken. All Joshua did was stop the sun and the moon so he could stay in alignment with God's plan to kill everything before it moved on. All you got to do is speak to that problem so that it can come in a, you can come in alignment with everything that God has spoken on your life. Yeah, yeah. That's all you got to do. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's all you got to do. If you will take the authority that's given to you. I ain't talking about your church authority. I'm not talking about your religious authority. I'm talking about your God given Jesus breathed life into you authority. And it's going to begin in three places. Amen. First of all, it's going to begin in prayer. Because you can't hear God unless you pray. Amen. Amen. It's going to begin in fasting. Because some stuff in your life is not going to move except by prayer and fasting. Amen. Amen. And it's going to begin in the Word of God. Amen. Do not allow the enemy to steal your authority. Amen. We stop praying. At 6 a.m. after we went through our 40 day of prayer fast. Come on. Because we were going to take a week off and the week turned into two months. Because the prayer fast ended September 14th or 15th? 14th, because right before I went to Barbados. It ended September 14th, the prayer fasting. It's now almost December 15th. Mm -hmm. We started back praying December 10th, something like that. So that's like a month and 45 months and so many days, almost two months. And all hell broke loose. All hell broke loose. The fire that I got from all that praying kind of blew me down. That authority that I was walking in kind of down. All of that access of power that God had given me kind of down. And I'm standing there wondering what's going on. Well, a fool, you ain't praying. <laughs> And not only that, I wasn't even in my word like I was supposed to be. Amen. So I do it the damn. So I was feeling all janky for 
for days and weeks. Oh. Lord, why am I janky? What did I do? What did I sin? Where? I'm looking for all these crazy sins. God did a cuss. I tell the truth Lord, did I lust? No, um, oh, Brad Underwood was looking pretty good there when he was on TV. <laughs> so, I'm just being real, y'all. Hey, hey, hey. so, Lord, did I, did I lust after Blair Underwood one time too many? <laughs> Until I saw that good that he had hanging out. <laughs> Lord, what did I do? And I'm fine. I'm looking very sin, but the sin that I was committing. I wasn't praying and I wasn't in my word. Amen. I wasn't praying and I wasn't in my word. I'm looking for the the obvious sins. Yes, yes. See, we too busy looking for the obvious right, stuff. Right, right. Like, remember, your answer is coming on the water walking. And then is, is, you don't want that answer? That's what I was dealing with. My answer was, get back to prayer. Get back in your word. I'm looking, I'm trying to repent of stuff I ain't even done. Because trust me, Blair Underwood wasn't looking that good. It wasn't looking all that good. But God had to gently nudge me back on to my path. And God will have to gently nudge you back onto your path. So that you can see the fullness of what he's trying to tell you. So that you can receive the goodness and the fullness of what he's trying to give you. That's what he wants us to know about taking back ground. No magical formula, no grand to dollars, just simple. Obey me, get in your word, fast, pray, worship me, yes. and seek my face. It's simple as that. Amen. If you want your 2014 to be better than your 2013, Tell it. and I hope y'all do. Anybody want their 2014 to be better than 2013? Yeah. Yeah. I want my 2014 to be better. I said, Lord, I'm ready to taste the goodness of the Lord yeah. while I'm in the land of the living. Not, let's face it, except for them little babies back there, all of us is 30 plus. Come on. Except for Melody back there. <laughs> you know, she's still, you know, got, got, got years, but you'll be there soon. Right. You know, you're going to be 30. So. About six to be exact, huh? Five, six, same thing. Those 14 coming. But we all need to taste the goodness of the Lord in the name of the Lord. Amen. The hard times we went through in 13, learn yeah. from it. Y'all caught hell in 13, learn yeah. from it. You lost a lot of stuff, learn from it. Yes, Lord. Don't repeat the same mistakes again. We, we lost stuff, we lost it. But now God is ready to give us back the ground, it's time. Stop focusing on the problem and let's focus on worshiping God. Amen. Yeah. Worship your way in the midst of the war. Worship in the war. Because, baby, if you worship in the war, mm. you will see a tremendous difference in your situation. Your situation may not change, but you'll change. Your situation may not change immediately, but you'll change. And you'll view how you view your situation differently. <laughs> So worship your way in the war. Be glad that you're in the war. Look at Joshua. He didn't lose not a man. You don't have to lose. You can be in the middle of the war and lose nothing. Hear me. You can be in the middle of the worst war of your life and lose nothing. But look how much you got to gain. Amen. Look how much you got to gain when you come through the war. If all the preachers that hadn't killed themselves these past few months, look how much they would have gained by telling the testimony of how they come over. Amen. Now they can't yes. tell them they down in Holly. Send Lazarus with some water. Mm. I feel bad for them and their families because that wasn't the answer. Yes, but I'm going to leave you with this word that God gave me. He said that 2013, coming out, the enemy was dispatched, the, the enemy had dispatched an ancient demon against the people of God. Yes, Lord. He said an ancient demon, which flows in the realm of the Leviathan spirit. Mm -hmm. Or a python, that helps you understand it better. He said that this ancient demon is one like, is unlike any other. That the church has never fought this demon at this level. And because the church has not fought this level, <coughs> said the Lord, 
He is going to distract some and destroy others. We can see that with the spirit of suicide right mm -hmm. now. Right because those ministers had never fought that demon before. Mm -hmm. So they didn't know how to war against him because he, was, he had this level of power that they had never encountered. But this demon is only dispatched after the church. So the people in the church are going to have to step up their warfare strategies if they're going to defeat this enemy. He said 2014, and he has confirmed this through several prophets, he said 2014 is going to be the best year for some and the worst year for others. Mm -hmm. Simply because we have to learn the strategy in order to fight. You cannot do church as usual. And here's what I found interesting. The very word that God gave me, he had me go and watch Perry Stone on TBN one day. I don't even watch TBN. But he had me watch Perry Stone. And Perry Stone gave the exact same word that God gave me. Amen. I said, Lord, you confirming your word through your prophets because nothing happens except the Lord reveals it to his prophets first. So God is telling the people. Perry Stone said it on national television. I've been in church. I've been going. I've been telling people, step it up. Because this demon has been dispatched against you. Now you need to take it personal right here. The demon that's been, that's been dispatched against you, he going to come in ways that you never thought he came before. That's right. He going to come in tactics, with tactics that you never knew before. Okay. He's already been dispatched. That's why some stuff we lost, we lost in 13. Mm -hmm. It's here. It, it's not coming. It's here. Mm -hmm. And that demon is out to kill, steal, and destroy. That's why so many, if you go out on the internet and type in how many pastors have committed suicide, you're going to get a whole bunch of them. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because the de and they were... October, November, December was like this rise of suicides among pastors. We need to change. That's not counting the ones that tried and failed. That's not counting the pastors' wives that killed themselves either now. We're talking about the body of Christ. But these that have, have surrendered to that spirit of suicide that comes with the python spirit, it's not done. He has just begun to rage like never before because the, every time we lose ground, he gets stronger. Hear this now. Every time a pastor kills himself, the thing gets stronger. Every time a pastor's wife kills himself, it gets stronger. Every time a, 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 a church person kills himself, it gets stronger. Every time we succumb to whatever it is, it gets stronger because we're feeding it what it wants most, our destruction. Amen. So hear this word, heed this word, begin to learn to war for real. And I don't know what God is going to do with the soul fast and what this other thing he's told me to do about being swept clean, but I know it has to deal with us being able to war against this demon. Because it's coming. And you're going to hear this word again from other prophets. Amen. Don't act like it's the first time you heard it. Be doing something about it because the world needs to keep going forth and going forth and going forth. 14 is going to be the best of years for some people. It's going to be the worst of years for some others. And if you do not heed this warning, it's going to be a horrible year for you. And I'm praying that we all make it through. Amen. But we're only going to make it through with the power and the authority that's given to us by Christ Jesus. Amen. Your mama can't pray you through. Your daddy can't pray you through. You got to pray yourself through. That's true. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise. For your word that you're holy, you're righteous, and you're awesome, you're mighty God, Prince of peace and everlasting Father. Now, God, let this word fall on our hearts like never before. Let this word saturate and marinate our hearts. Father God, let us take this 2013 morning from the Lord and let us be like Joshua and be able to stand in command. In the name of Jesus, let us be able to stand the command in the midst of war, the fire, the flood, the wind, and the rain. Let us not be distracted by the lies of the enemy. Let us not be distracted by the traps of the enemy. Let us not be distracted by the tricks of the enemy. Let us not be distracted in the name of Jesus. Let us not be destroyed by anything the enemy would throw at us. But let us take up our sword, raise yes. up our sword, and be commanders of the army of the Lord. Yes, in the name of Jesus, let us take every situation, every circumstance, every problem, and let us be able to stand and command in the name of Jesus. Let us take authority over our households. Let us take authority over the realm of the spirit, authority on our jobs, authority in our schools. In the name of Jesus, we bind the enemy that caused that boy to go into the school the other day and kill that girl and kill himself. 
We bind the spirit of murder over our schools yes. in the name of Jesus. We bind the murder of the spirit of suicide over our schools in the name of Jesus, over our children in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of suicide over our churches in the name of Jesus. And we command every one of them back into the pits of hell, never to return in the name of Jesus. Now we loose the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, over our children, over our churches, over our families, over our jobs, in the name of Jesus. We lose the power of God over our churches, over our schools, over our families, over ourselves, in the name of Jesus. We do lose the joy of the Lord over ourselves, over our children, over our families, in the name of Jesus. Now we thank you, Lord, thank that we can obey you in every thank command. You, we thank you, Lord, thank that you. we can obey you at every turn. We thank you, Lord, thank that we will not sleep, slumber, nor yes. fail you, that we will be commanders of the army. Yes, that we will be strong and mighty through God, pulling down these strongholds, yes. casting down every imagination that exalts itself yes. against the knowledge of who we know our God to be. Mm. In the name thank of Jesus, you. now we thank you, thank we praise you. We bless you, we glorify you, we magnify you, and we lift your name on high. For in the name that is above every name. Woo! And I don't want to Let that name be Jesus. 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 Let every heart say, Amen.